Hey, what's up? <laughs> I hope that you are having, all of you are all having a really, really good week and um, getting into it, getting the job done. I am in a different hemisphere to most of you guys. If you don't already know, I am in Australia. So I, uh, I'm already a day ahead of a lot of you. So I'm already on my, my, on my first day of the week, Monday. So you guys will be coming into your uh, Monday soon. You're probably on Sunday night sleeping and yeah. I hope that you're all well. And um, I do apologize for my last video. If I seemed a little bit out of sorts, I think I was a little bit. I think it was just me trying to do a quick video and show you my um, my new project that I'm working on. But also, you know, I'm in, I'm in the zone, you know, and um, that goes without saying. So straight up, uh, hello, <laughs> if you're new to my channel, my name is Goliath and I'm the artist, author and creator of the El Goliath Tarot Deck. And I'm working on my first kid's book and uh, I live, yes, in Melbourne, as many of you know. So getting into the start of this video, because it is going to be a heavy one. Um, I have to kind of do some, you know, some house cleaning first and get to a point where I'm like, you know, easing into a lot of the things that are probably going to come out of me because Sometimes I don't know what's going to come out of me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like a live wire, you know, uh, people in my group, my friends, people that know me uh, around me know that I am one of the craziest monkeys in the tree. You know, I'm pretty out there and uh, I just kind of go with what I feel. It's kind of that Sagittarian thing. I like to keep it free and moving and keep it popping. <laughs> I think that's what they say in America, you know, keep it popping like popcorn. <laughs> it's got to be fun. It's got to be fresh. It's got to have energy. And um, yeah, I'm kind of like living my life like that a lot this year. So if it feels stagnated, if it feels inflexible, if it feels draining, I just fuck it off. And um, that's what I totally encourage all of you to be doing if you're not already doing it. So, um, and a lot of you think I'm like some hard ass. <laughs> I'm really not. I promise. Uh, I, I, I tell the truth, you know, I tell the truth and I, I have a, so much respect for this, um, for my, for the topics that I talk about. I have a lot of respect for the people that are walking this path with me. And, um, you know, please don't think I'm some like army general or something because I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm just like you, subject to human law, just like you. And uh, I'm, you know, very hard pressed for time. So it's always about my time management and it's the most precious commodity that I have. So uh, thank you for appreciating my videos and for letting me, you know, do my thing and for taking the time to listen to me, rabbit on about all this stuff. So clear my mind. I was going to get some Jack and juice for this one, but I thought, nah, I'm not going to do wine. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to stick to some good old fashioned coffee and uh, see what, you know, what comes out. So yeah, I think uh, we'll just kind of start. You've probably seen the title. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to call this one psychic medium readings, why I quit, or I might call it you know, psychic mediums, real talk, you know, I don't know, but it, it is going to encompass a lot of this topic. And I'm going to, I, and I'm not going to, I really, really want to look at this from a very fair point of view. I want this to be a video or a podcast that is very well balanced. So it's not a bashing video. It's not a video that's, you know, all psychics are fucked or all, all people are fucked. I think people are fucked in general. Like, <laughs> if you haven't figured that out by now, I mean, where the fuck have you been? So yeah, there is a lot of fuckery going on on both sides of the fence. And um, this is going to be a personal one. So I might bring in some stories. So it's like, <sighs> where do I even start? Hmm. Well, it's taken me a bit of a while, I guess, just starting there to really come to terms with this industry and coming to terms with how I feel about things and, and how I've shifted my point of view over the years about, you know, personally about my practice, personally about helping people or wanting to help people. You know, there's, there's been so many significant changes that have happened in my life just in the past 
two years, you know, if, you know, COVID happened and um, I went through a really tough patch there, I think, you know, who didn't? Uh, but this, I'm kind of rewinding the clock a little bit and I'm going further back to before COVID, before um, I really decided to really reevaluate my stance on doing readings and practicing mediumship and, and or doing mediumship for people. And uh, I kind of stepped away from, you know, I took a really big back, a big back seat from it. <laughs> and I think a lot of people, I know there's some Christian groups that listen to me now. Uh, I've had a lot of Christians reach out to me since I did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about the left-hand path and why I'm kind of moved over to that side. I'm on, yes, I'm on that team now. Um, is that they, they think that, you know, when you do tarot, you're channeling the fallen angels, you know, I, I, by the way, I get so many mess, just side note quickly. I get so many people reaching out to me all the time. Every morning I wake up and I look at my Instagram and it's just inundated with <clears throat> people that really approach me from the wrong way. When it comes to my art, when it comes to my mind, my work, people are reaching out from a place of take, 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 what can I get from Goliath? What can I get? And it, you can, I can, I can just read the first sentence of the message. And it's like, you haven't approached me in a way that's respectful. You haven't introduced yourself. You haven't given me, I don't know anything about you. You're coming at me from an angle of entitlement. You want something from me. And the cobra energy, if you don't know, my totem animal is the cobra. I just bang, buy block. And I never, ever go back. You know, that's kind of how I've gotten to this point, particularly in this industry, um, you know, with any like the spiritual spirituality, no matter what comes under that umbrella, I have to be really, really honest with you. It really comes from a very, very distorted lens. It comes like, I'm just going to go out there and say it. I don't really, I don't give a fuck. Like just say what you want in the comments. All right, let's just get into it now. Most people in the spiritual field are mentally unstable. Repeat, mentally unstable. They are not using spirituality as a tool to improve their life. They're using it as a tool for self-advantage. They're not there for service of other, which by the way, all service in oneness, all service to other is service to self. They have no regard for that. They're all about trying to acquire social capital. They're all about themselves. They're coming at this from a very narcissistic point of view. So it's always trying to reach out to me, trying to, you know, get, get a grip on me, pull me, grab my ankle and pull me down. Or what can I get for free? Or what can he do for me? And that's just not the way to approach spirit. It's not the way to approach this industry. It's not the way to even approach me because I'm going to bitch slap your ass so hard or I'll just block you. Bye. You know, and that's what it is. If I had, I was saying to my friend, <laughs> I was saying to my friend the other day, if I had a gold coin for every single time someone sends me a message saying, I think we were connected in a past life. Oh, oh I had a dream about you. You know, I had this, I have that you're, we're in a, we're doing this thing in the last like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. No. I mean, I'd be a very wealthy man. And a lot of people, when they do this past life chat, they're always talking about, Hey, they, they were never just a, you know, a soldier in an army. They got their head blown off in world war two. They're always a queen or a king, or they're someone important. And I've even had people go as so far as to claim that they themselves are the reenactment or the re the rebirth of Christ himself. I mean, you know, and I believe that Christ, you know, Jesus, Jesus did exist. Yes. He was a magician that manipulated source energy. Yes. I think it's all distorted, but you know, the way they wrote that shit, but anyway, I don't want to go down that road, but what I get is people just coming at me in the wrong way. And it is the biggest turnoff. Okay, so as much as you can live in the spiritual world and do these readings and no matter what it is, no matter what part of that banner that you're under, whether it is doing tarot card readings, psychic readings, mediumship, prana healing, 
Ray K, you know, whatever it is, whatever goddess you are coming, are you coming through Lilith or Hecate or whatever the fuck, doesn't matter. It's just got to come from a place of respect and it's got to come from a place that's logical. When you approach someone in, an, in a way that the other person looks at that and it's too forceful, what do you think the other person's going to do? Really? What do you think they're going to do? They're going to pull away. Okay. Side note, side rant. Um, so I think I'll try and take you back. I do apologize if this video is a little bit jumpy, but yes, it's taken me a lot to even get to a point where I want to make a video talking about this because quite frankly, if I could just sum up this video in one simple statement, the industry has become so saturated or this field has become so saturated seemingly since the pandemic with all of these people that claim to be or want to be, uh, you know, occultists or tarot card readers, mediumship, light workers, whatever. Um, it, it's, it's just, there's so many of them now. It, it, it's actually a little bit overwhelming. And I, I don't, it, it, it scares me. And it's gotten to a point now where it's so out of control that it, it makes me feel very uncomfortable to be associated with this because I'm privy to things down the track and I can see where this is going. So that's why I have moved into a different, I'm over here now. Okay. I'm over here now. I've moved into a different space and that's, that's my journey, but that's not to shit all over anyone else that's still doing this because that's your beautiful journey. But I want to make this video today to talk about the things that are out there that are happening, that are going wrong, that are happening on a daily basis that no one seems to want to talk about. Or what scares me more is that no one, no one really has the goal to be honest and just put the kettle on and sit down and do a video talking about all of the things that go wrong and where it all goes wrong. Because nine times out of 10, it does. From my point of view, it really does. And it's scary. There is a very, very dark side to mediumship. There is a very, very dark side to this industry. Whether it's looking at it from the perspective of a healer, a reader, a client, whatever. So... I think like, you know, I can only go with my personal experiences, but most people that claim to be psychic or mediums are just complete phonies. They're complete frauds. They're completely fake. They aren't doing this for genuine healing and love of, and, and, and a gift that they were given they're not authentic. And these ones really, really fuck up, fuck up the industry for the people out there that are genuinely trying to do good, aligned, authentic work that really comes from their heart. And I can tell you now, if you're doing more than like five or six of these readings a day, at one point I was, you're going to get like a zombie. You're going to, you're going to burn the fuck out. Like a lot of people in this industry, they come and go, they come and go, they come and go, they burn out, they come back into it. They burn out, they come back into it, particularly the Pisces and the water signs I've noticed. But just in general, it, it is so hard to do authentic work because it drains you spiritually, physically, mentally. It is like when you do a reading and you really do a reading, you're inviting an energetic field to merge with your own being, to merge with you on such an intimate level that it's almost like having sex with someone. Okay, you may have never had it heard, maybe you've never had anyone put it, like, put it to you like that, but that's what it's actually really like. Now, could you imagine, have, like I'm not a prostitute, could you imagine having like seven, eight people having sex with you every day and people coming and going in your space and in your, cause you're not just in the mediumship world. 
you're not just letting a person walk through the door and having a quick physical exchange. They're bringing with them all of their problems. They're bringing with them all of their spiritual entities, energies, whatever, into your space. And if they're coming from a lower place of disempowerment, confusion, and being lost, which most of them are because they're already seeking, they're seeking something from you. First of all, it's not a relationship based on equality because you have something they want. And second of all, you're going to just let that in. Now they leave after it and then you feel completely screwed. That's exactly how I felt. There is a massive imbalance in power dynamic when it comes to doing psychic and mediumship readings. There just is. And I think these days, because we're heading into such a weird time with all this woke shit, is that the the things that really hold society together, basically what I'm saying is, which is kind of why I'm doing these videos now, because I, I can see how little we have little time we actually have left now as a human race. So I just I don't give a fuck. I just say what I feel is that um, people just want to come in and they want to feel soup. They want to feel powerful. You know, a lot of people that get into this spiritual, spiritual stuff, they came from a place of disempowerment. They probably were rejected from their family. Um, a lot of them have extreme mental health problems that are not checked. Not by the way, there's nothing wrong with having mental health problems. I think we all do. I do. We all do. It just depends on whether it's like whether you're aware of it, whether you're working on it. Because if you're not working on it, that's not good. You're going to cause chaos in other people's lives, yeah? So I know this is a little bit jumpy, but yeah, it, it, it's so scary because what I'm saying here is that there is no consensus on reality anymore. So we can just make up something in our head and just enforce that on someone else. And if they don't agree with me, then I can cancel them or try and bully them or shut them down. And I don't believe in that. If you disagree with me, I sit with you and I want to talk to you. I'd love to hear your point of view if it's different to mine, because that's where I learn. But we've gotten to a point with society now where we're not allowed to say anything. Everyone's got to be seen as perfect. Everyone's got to be seen as saying the right thing. And everyone's too concerned about fitting in rather than just speaking your truth and having the fear of being disliked. I don't care about being disliked. I don't give a fuck. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not your friend. I'm just a person on the other end of this phone giving information to you. Okay, I have some friends that I've bonded with and connected more with than others, and that's, that's life, that's fair. But in the most part, I am what I am, and I do what I can. But yes, even the concept of doing a reading for someone is messing around with supernatural power. I mean, to be able to access information on a perfect stranger that just walked through the door, that is some level of psychic supernova supernatural ability it's not an average person can do that and that's what i was saying getting back to my point before very very few people actually can it's like going to get a massage if you want like a remedial massage and your back's fucked and you go to some shitty food court or back alley place and they put their hands on you and you know in the first two seconds when they place their hands on your back that they don't know what they're doing. They have not studied the origins and insertions. They don't know the muscles. They don't know the pressure. And now they're pushing their hands all around your back. They're probably pushing on your spinal cord and it's hurting you. And you can tell that there's no fucking muscle there. They're just pushing on bone. And they've got no respect for what they're doing. They're probably checking their phone because they're not there for, for a place of healing. And, and say, hey, look, sometimes food courts can work. Sometimes going to the back alleyway, you know, the coat hanger job, as they might call it, might be the way to go. But in my, in my humble opinion, it is that you should always seek out someone that has had a reputable um, feedback and has been proven, has a track record. You know, do you want to go to someone who's been doing this for two seconds and charging the big money? Or do you want to go to someone who's been doing this for 20, 30 plus years? Because let me tell you right now, when it comes to readings, 
the amount of time that that person has been doing it matters. It shows that they've stuck around. It shows that they're in it for the long haul. They're playing a long-term game. They didn't just read some shit off the internet or they're sitting there with their book looking up the tarot card meanings. They are doing it for real. Okay, they're the ones... Okay, by the way, a decent reading that would actually require payment for me, for, for me personally, you need to bring up five things that you could not possibly know about me. One, two, three, four, five. At the bare minimum. At the bare minimum. That is what is required. And that was what I was taught when I came into this. Otherwise, we're just plain make-believe. Yes, as a reader, you do need to prove yourself. But also, that being said, there are times when things just don't come through. Sometimes you just get nothing. Sometimes it's blank. Sometimes I've got an energetic back, like a brick wall up. Sometimes they're not really here for the right reading. Sorry, they're not here for the right reason. They just came because they just want you to entertain them. And that brings me on to another part of the video. I'm not here to entertain you. Psychic mediumship is about guidance. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to guide and help clarify what is going on inside of you. Because if you already knew and you were already in tune with yourself enough, then why the fuck would you go to a reader to begin with? If you already know and you're already confident in yourself, what other clarification outside of you could you think could answer a question that's inside you? Doesn't work like that. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. A lot of the readers, they don't understand how readings work. They don't understand the fundamentals of it. They have no ethics ethics they have none none no ethics whatsoever and then the reader they'll they have no understanding because you haven't set the ground rules of what is going to be going on in this conversation or in this consultation you know so that's why in any type of professional operation when it comes to a psychic reading there needs to be a I don't talk about legal stuff. I don't talk about babies. I don't talk about children. I don't date my clients. Be professional. If you want to be taken seriously, then you need to be professional. All right? Straight up. I know I'm being straight with you and I, I feel like, you know, if I'm getting you back up, I don't, look, I don't give a fuck. It, it is what it is. This is from my experience. Now, most of us that are doing this work or have been doing this work from our heart, we need a pat on the back. The amount of people that sneer and laugh and judge and behind your back, they're <laughs> laughing. Oh my God, he thinks he's psychic. <laughs> she thinks she's psychic. <laughs> you're, you're probably the black sheep of the family. You probably laughed at, you're laughing stock with the whole family. You know, you probably are. In a lot of, I've just got this Christian group that's been messaging me with this Christian bullshit. This is how I deal with religion. Ready? They come to me with this religious nonsense. It's right up there with the Easter bunny. It's right up there with Santa Claus. Yeah. I'd love to see the Santa Claus have his own church. They come to me with the, you know, uh, as I'm seen, as I wrote, I'm an enemy of God. I was told the other day. All right. You know, even just the mere concept that I'm trying to do a reading and use tools of divination or trying to connect with the dead is that that is an act against God, as I was told. This is what I say. Humans have been documented on this planet for over 300,000 years of evolution. Okay. Abrahamic religion has been documented on this planet for no more than 2,000 years. Fuck off. Get the fuck off me. When I say that to someone, they walk away. 
leave me alone. I don't push my agenda or I don't really have an agenda. I mean, I don't, that's not the wrong choice of words. Sorry, I apologize. I don't push my thought process or my belief systems on other people. I am a free agent and I let other people be whoever they are and they are allowed to believe whatever they want, just as I am. But when someone comes at me with that attitude or that energy, that's when I start getting mad. That's when I start getting angry. And that's when I get, to, I get to the point where I just made that point before. Nothing that they could say. What the fuck were people doing before the 2000 years ago? What? They were doing what I'm doing. Earth worship, Mother Gaia, Wicca, all that stuff. Tribal connection to the land. Doesn't matter what culture it was. They were all doing it. So yes. And even if you are a Christian person or you're a religious person, whatever you believe, more power to you. But please, I mean, why are you even watching my videos? Why are you watching my channel? Because you're sneaky. Because you've got to try and report back to headquarters. I'm not going to convert. You're not going to convert me. Even to have one, I had one the other day. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm getting off on tangent. But the, <laughs> the other day, someone wrote in saying, you're such a beautiful man. You could be a soldier for God. And you, you know, you speak well and you, you know, you're humble and all this shit. And you know, you could be really such a waste. How dare you? How dare you write that to me? That's why I, you know what I do? Sometimes I just head fuck them. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just say, I don't follow your God. I follow the other one. The one that's in charge of the earthly realm here. Because right now, if he was playing golf, He'd be on the final hole putting right about now. That's how fucked up this world is. Anyway, <laughs> I can't help it. Another sip of the coffee. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, did I say that? Yes, I did. I don't give a fuck. Okay, so let's look at the reader side of it. And then we'll get on to the client side of it, I guess, the queer side of it. <sighs> If I could say anything that could be of really high service to anyone, I will say this. <sighs> say if someone's stuck in quicksand and they're sinking, do you jump into the quicksand with them to get them out? No. In a survival situation, you are usually taught to tie something to an object and throw it out to them or Bring something that they can reach so that they can help pull themselves out of that situation that they themselves had to be a vibrational match to. So you don't jump into the quicksand with them. If someone's drowning, in some cases, what can happen is the other person's in panic mode and they will grab you. They'll just anything to try and get their head above water and they'll grab you and push you down and they can pull themselves back up and put their head above the water, drowning you in the process. Yeah. So you've got to be able to understand. I know if you're listening to me and you're a reader, this is like code word here because I know I feel like you're getting what I'm saying is that we don't attach ourselves to situations that can fuck us up. We are more about teaching someone and guiding them to go fish and hunt for themselves. Here's here. Here's some rope. I'll tie it to the tree. Now you pull yourself out. I don't I don't tie and I don't tie the rope to myself. Okay, I'm not your savior. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to instruct you on what to do. What it really comes down to is trying to get them to get back in tune with their own sense of self and to give them a sense of peace. Is that the confirmation of what they know is that some, in some cases, people don't need a big heavy reading. They just need confirmation. Now, most of these, I hope that that made sense, by the way. <clears throat> now, most of these people that are doing readings are not doing it from, like I said, they're not doing it from a place of love and service to others and servitude. They're doing it to acquire social capital and they've just opened the fucking tarot card deck. They don't know anything about the tarot. By the way, that's just a tool. It's too much about the, it's, it's too much about the tools. It's just all about the tools now. I have mastered all of, div all of the divination tools, the pendulum, the tarot, all of it. 
And the one that I love the most these days, if I'm going to do a reading for someone or I'm going to do a channeling, is none at all. You are an extension of source. You don't need the tarot cards. The power of the tarot is not in you. Sorry, it's not in the cards. It's in you. It's in you. You're an extension of that. I think a lot of people just don't understand that. And they're just living in some shithole. A lot of them are living in poverty. They're struggling from week to week. A lot of these, like since this whole like lifestyle branding thing happened where everyone's like able to project an an avatar of themselves online, that it's like, you know, you get rich quick or, you know, that type of, you know, I get to live, I get to travel the world and I I want a laptop in a swimming pool, you know, on the edge of the pool typing on the laptop and, you know, you can be like me and I don't have to, it's just, it's not true. It's not real. There is no shortcut to long-term stability in life. There's no, like these get, anything that's built really quickly just falls over just as quick. So you have to, if you're going to come into this, like if you're listening and you're coming in hot and fresh into this mediumship and um, psychic readings, then it's one day at a time. Focus on one skill set and harness that, perfect that, work on that. Well, not perfect it. No one ever gets perfect, but you can master it in yourself by showing up, having the energy, having the due diligence, taking the time, because ultimately what you should be coming to the, into this for is the acquisition of knowledge, is that you want to improve and you're genuinely coming through the door into this field because It is a calling. It's something that you've really felt in your soul. And it's something that you've had a theme in your life. Like a lot of you, if you look back, you'll find that there would have been some kind of esoteric or spiritual theme taking place in your life to get to this point. I find it very highly, highly unlikely that someone would be like a banker that or uh, like someone who's like in a really structured, um, regimented thing, like like accountant or engineer would suddenly just have a flick of the switch and now they're a psychic medium. It generally, it doesn't tend to work like that. It's more kind of people that are more in the arts, the artisans, the craftsmen's, um, the literate, you know, the spellers, the poets. It's more, for me, what I found, it's more that side of the brain. But I'm not saying it's not possible, but for me, in my experience, that's what I've seen. So yeah, if you're coming into the industry, um, Please just try to be authentic. Try to take your time. The best advice that I could give you would be many years ago, I went to a reader and well, not a reader. She was a full blown medium, probably one of the first ones I ever went to. And she said, you're going to, you're going to be doing readings. You're going to go down this path. And at that time I didn't really think I was, but I, I took her advice on board And I I listened to it, of course. And she said to me, the best advice I could give you would be to do a hundred free readings. Go and do a hundred free readings just to build up your confidence, just to build up your knowledge, just, and I'm talking face to face, you know, a lot of them are done over the internet or zoom or, you know, Skype or whatever. But back in the day, that's what she said. And I listened to her. So I did. So I did. That's exactly what I did. I, if I, was, I knew that if I was going to get to a point of ability, that it would be practice. It would be channeling. It would be keeping my mind clear, taking it seriously. By the way, no alcohol and no drugs for me when I'm doing a reading. It is, you have to be clear-minded. It's like looking out a dirty window. Do you want the window to be filthy or do you want the window to be clear? So you've got to eat clean. You've got to think right, feel right, be in the right mood. There's so many factors that have to come into an account that would actually make me in like optimum position right now to actually even do a reading. And that's what I was getting back to my point. You can't give, ready? You can't give what you don't have. You're in a lot of you, a lot of readers, a lot of people in the industry, you're in delusion about what you have. You're bullshitting yourself. You are lying to yourself. When you wake up in the morning, you know that you are not 
who you claim to be. That's why you're so loud and trying to affirm your abilities. Have some humble pie. Look at yourself in the mirror and be really honest with yourself in the morning. Are you really doing this for the right reasons? And are you real? Are you authentic? Because let me tell you this, and this is going to sound really hardcore. Ready? One, two, three, here we go. Can't give what you don't have. So if basically if you're, would you, like, let's put it this way. Would you go to a personal trainer that's morbidly obese? They're that fat, they can hardly walk. Would you go to that person for a personal training program to work on your cardiovascular endurance? No. Would you go and seek out, actively seek out an accountant to help manage your money and help you work out strategies to improve your finance when they themselves have been flat broke their whole life and have never invested in anything and have no experience about what the fuck they are doing? No. You can't give what you don't have. So don't, you can't fake it. That's one thing. You can't fake it. One of the first principles that I believe in spirituality is that you have to be willing to tell the truth. When you tell the truth that now we can actually do some work with that. Now we can actually work on developing that. You've got to be really realistic when you're starting out in any field of the level of ability that you have. Okay, you can't, there's no jumping to the top. There's no fast forwarding this. It's something that comes with time. Be patient. Okay, don't give advice to other people on things that you yourself are not in alignment with. Now, people might hear that and say, yeah, but I can heal myself while I'm healing others. Yes, that is true to a certain capacity, but for the most part, no, no. You cannot give what you do not have. You just have delusion about your own grandeur. You're just blowing smoke up your ass. You're playing make-believe. The real, real mediums. Oh, I can hear people getting upset now. They're not on social media. The real witches, they like a lot of the hardcore witches, like I've got to be careful now that I'm on the left-hand path because a lot of the people that are on the left-hand path, they don't want me even saying this stuff because it's so real that it could hurt other people. Like, (sighs) because most of the stuff that you see is fake as fuck. So like, I've got to be careful because I don't don't want to piss off people on on the left-hand path because part of the word, you know, a cult is secret. We don't share our power. By telling other people that they're not powerful is power in some capacity. Just getting people to own their truth and people on this side don't want that. They don't want them to know how fake and stupid they are. They want them to continue that line of behavior because it keeps them out of their hair. It keeps them out of their way. I don't know if that made sense, but I hope it did. Yeah. So you've got to be real, really real with yourself. Spirituality is mastery of self. Okay. Okay. And, and sometimes, it, it, sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes you just don't feel it. And that's, what, that's fine. You come and you go and you come back. If you need a break and you're in a burnout position and you're doing readings, then that's okay. Go take your time to burn out. Go take the time that you need to just recruit, re, you know, reconfigure yourself. But don't fuck around with spirit because when you fuck around with spirit like I said spirit fucks back with you so I hope that you are kind of enjoying this this video I know it's hard to hear now I'm going to just tap on the spiritual community or you know the tarot community and this is going to sound crazy too but I, I just I don't want to be too associated with it I, I just stay away I keep to myself I do my own thing it's how I've always been Coming into it, I I found how incredibly clicky it was, how bitchy it was. Um, I even had people messaging me at the start when I came in with my tarot deck that I'd worked very hard to make that said, you know, we haven't actually, I actually have a screenshot of this to this day, which I've kept in my phone. Sometimes I show people for a joke, just for a laugh, because it's the the entitlement and insanity of it is just so ridiculous that uh, she wrote, a woman wrote a message to me once saying, 
saying to me, <laughs> we haven't decided whether we like your deck yet. So stop putting posts on your social media because we haven't approved it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fuck off. How's that for a response? <laughs> So what I would say, a lot of the people that are in this spiritual field, the tarot field in particular, um, and bless them, God bless them. Like, oh, like some of them are sweet. They're so sweet. Um, they've just got no clue, you know, no clue. They're not capable of critical thinking. They all have to check with each other and follow it. They copy each other. They follow each other. They do tags. It's just to try and acquire like more followers to try and get more attention um, I had so many people at the start when I came into this field as well that were asking me, can I get a free copy of your deck so that I can do a video on it? I'm like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. Never did a video on it. No, I said, I was like, I think it was like over 20 decks went out at the start and I think only six people actually followed through with what they said they were going to do. They just wanted free shit. They just wanted a free deck. They had no regard for the creator or the effort and time that goes into making it. They're that entitled, they'll be sending a message saying, well, when your next deck comes out, you better send me another copy too. <laughs> like you're entitled to my work, fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, what I see a lot of it is just crap. It's just consumeristic bullshit. A lot of it uh, with the tarot. It's, and, and this is one thing that I found. Humans are such a social tribal species. We're an interdependent species. So we need each other. This fragmentation thing, it's not real. It doesn't work long-term. But I will say a lot of people, they, it's more about the belonging to a group than it is about what the group is actually doing. You know, so it's more about the aesthetic or the connection of talking to people and being a part of a group dynamic than it is about standing for the principle of what the group is actually there to begin with, like what they're actually coming together for and uh, this is a really hardcore analogy but um you know when i think i heard about the ku klux klan you know back in america in the time and it still exists it's just so disgusting but a lot of these people are actually like still live in the neighborhood or live next door to um african-american people black people but yet they, and they hear they claim to hate them but yet they're living right beside them and sometimes talking to them and you know, not being so when, but when they're in a group of people, their dynamic changes because it's not really, see what I'm going with that. I, I know that's a really hardcore analogy, but what I'm saying is it's like people aspire to be a part of a group. It's more important that they're in a group that they feel connected to than it is about what it is, what the cause of it's there for. Because fundamentally, a lot of the time when you look back in the group, this is why I stay away from groups. You know, it, when you look back at the group, it tends to be the collective consciousness of the tribe doesn't genuinely at most really um, like correlate with the person. It's just more about that person wanting to you know, not be alone, I think. And that's why I found in a lot of relationships, particularly when I came into psychology or when I came into tarot readings or anything like spirituality, a lot of relationships, are t a lot of people are in relationship dynamics with their partner for survival. They're not there based on love. They're not, they don't love their partner. Their partner doesn't love them. They're just there because of the dual income. Life's easier with two people. And, you know, that's kind of how it tends to be. Most people are just surviving. They're not thriving. If that makes sense. A really, really good one that I heard was, is your house in order? Mm -hmm. What do you think I mean by that? Well, it's pretty obvious. Is your kitchen clean? Is your house clean? If I came to your house right now, is your kitchen clean? You want to what? Sorry, you want to what? You want to clean someone else's house? <laughs> you want to help clean up someone else's life? <laughs> How about you work on cleaning your own fucking life? How's that for an idea? Then you can start getting to work on helping other people. Yeah, it's me first. I can't pour from an empty cup. I was talking about money spells the other day. I know I'm getting off topic and I know this is going to be a long one, but oh, well, <laughs> oh, I have to get real with you. Fuck, I have to. But yeah, it's like 
if you have really poor, piss poor management of money and you have no idea how money works, you don't know how to acquire it. As soon as you make the money, it goes straight back out the door again. It's like, <laughs> it's like pouring water into a bucket with a hole at the bottom. It just goes straight through. If you don't have, it doesn't matter what amount of magic you do to try and improve your financial situation. If you still have a, a really poor concept around the concept of money in your, in your head, then it's just not going to sustain long term. It's not going to work. Okay. It's just not going to work. Uh, off that subject as well, uh, people have been asking me, why am I doing these videos now? Why now? Well, I'm going to get really real with you. <laughs> hmm. Well, this, yeah, this is hard to say, but coming into 2022, I'm just clearing my mind before I even try to articulate this into words because it, it is hard to say. Mm. There is something that's happening on an energetic level and on a physical level in my body right now that I think I'm going back to source. I know, I don't, I, I know that sounds really weird, but and maybe I should do a video on this. I don't know. But if you spiritually are truly connected and you know me, I feel that there's some kind of shift that's happening collectively in the world. Like there really is. I know that people say that all the time, but I feel that there really is. And I have a calling that I feel that possibly I am needed somewhere else. Like I know I'm going to do this book. I'm going to do a couple of books, kids books, you know, conscious kids books and do some videos, but I feel that there's something else there for me. And it's almost like it's calling me. And I know this a lot when I, I go, when I wake up from sleeping, I wake up and it is kind of like I have gone into like, I know we travel when we sleep, by the way, we astral travel, but I mean, I'm, I'm going out so far beyond like humans. Like I'm actually kind of losing a little bit of my humanity, like in, in a really weird way, not in a, in a horrible way. It's almost like I'm kind of transcending humanism. And that's, I know that that's not the point of life. We're here to have the human experience, but I feel that at some times, um, over the past couple of weeks to month, to the past month, I, I'm really coming back and I'm in a different, like I've been in a different world, like really in a different world. And I feel like some of the memories I'm having are being wiped a little bit. I don't know. I don't know, but I, I'm coming back. I'm speaking different languages. Um, and yeah, I think that's really interesting, actually. It just dropped into my head then. If we're all one, and we're all fragments of source, <clears throat> by, then by default, I'll put it this way, I've learned this, this might be interesting to you. By default, a medium is closer to source energy than you are. Because if you were as close as medium was to source energy, then you wouldn't need the medium. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow, that was, that was intense. So, I don't know if you understood what I'm saying. I'll repeat it again. Uh, I'll explain it a little bit better. But the set, there is like, if we all f were fragmented from, say like the sun, it's got different rays of lights coming, light, light beams coming from it. Then some beams are closer to the sun than others. And I think that's what a medium really is, by the way because the separation that's between me and other is starting to fray. The walls between me and other is starting to break down. I am starting to spiritually break down in, in a weird way. I don't know whether it's breaking down to break through. I don't know. But what I do know is now it's become very, very hard for me over the past year or so to watch TV. I don't get on public transport. I don't get on buses. I don't go many places. I don't make eye contact. Going to the shopping center can be fucked up. 
because I have all of this, um, I can just look at someone and I'm bang, I'm getting a download. People they spoke to, where they went, what they did, their energy, how they're feeling. Usually it's distress about money, stress about their kids, um, a lot of sexual abuse, standard stuff that a regular medium would deal with in any, any standard, decent, hardcore reading. But it's become such to a point where it's almost like I have to really, really put up these um, barriers and create a bubble around myself, which is why I had to ultimately quit doing mediumship for a, quite a long time because the walls were just too blurred. And the exchange of energy between me and others was just so severe that I wasn't able to justify the engagement at all. So I'd have to go into like a, a massage or a reading or whatever, give them what they needed and not attach, not connect. So it's like I'm connecting, but I'm not connecting. And I think that's how I kind of am now at that point where I'm treating people that try to put an energetic hook onto me. And they're not even aware that they're doing it, but I can feel it. They're trying to pull my energy. They're trying to drain my energy. And you know that like people, general term for that would be an energy vampire. By the way, an energy vampire could totally do that without them knowing that. And I've got no doubt in my mind that there are some spell casters out there that are probably going to, th you know, throw something my way. I have no doubt about that. The more that I do these videos, the more that people will try and silence me. I know that. Um, but I don't care. And I have a lot of protection around me. And the, the type of entity that I'm working with now, which I won't say, I will not say, but it would be like them coming up against an army in a a general, like it, it, you're just going to get fucked up by even trying that on me now. So I will give you a little bit of a backstory, um, some story time. When I was doing the mediumship and I, I started getting into it and I took a few courses, I played very coy with the teachers. Like I, I didn't really want to let them know exactly how in, in, in depth I was how adept I was to, to doing it. I just wanted to be around people that were in the field and to suss out the ones that are really there for the right reasons and to, and to take my time easing into it. But like I said earlier in the video, there would have been a theme to your life if you were already doing it. And some people can't do it and they don't want to and that's fine. Some people kind of come into it later. But what I will say is that this is a heavy one, ready? All mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums, all right? So just because someone says they're psychic, that doesn't make them a medium. Being a medium to me, in my opinion, is a whole different kettle of fish. That is a calling. That's a tap on the shoulder in your life that you'll either adhere to and say, yes, I am going to step forth and be a representative of spirit for the highest good of all, or no, no, thank you, not for me, maybe in another lifetime, but not this life. That's how mediumship works to me. Mediumship is not something that you can acquire. You can have mediumship ability and develop that, of course you can but it's not something that like a switch, you just flick on and then one day it's there. It would have been there from day dot. It would have been there from the time you were born. So for me, um, as a kid, I didn't understand the gifts that I had. And I used to do what I now know is called a psychic attack reading. And this is a very, very bad thing to do. Very, very wrong, very selfish and very juvenile and childish and rude, but I used to, and I'm quite ashamed of this actually, and I can share this with you. It's the truth. I used to sense things about people and just say them. Yeah, just say it. And, and sometimes it would be spirit would be around me giving me information and because by the way, when, like on, when you are a medium, it's like catnip to the spiritual world. Spirits and orbs will always be around you. Like there were times where I remember as a kid, I'd go out in the backyard and I'd have all these orbs around me. Or like, it was kind of like a Disney effect. 
I had orbs. Orbs are always around mediums because they're trying to line up to try and connect with you, to connect to their loved ones. Back in the day, I didn't know what they were. You know, you don't, you don't know. You just, you have to, it's just trial and error. You've got to teach yourself a lot of this stuff. Um, but one time, I'll give you one example. I was about, I don't know I was still doing it up to about 18. You know, I'm, I'm, it is, but hey, it's the truth. You know, it is unbecoming behavior and I, I apologize for it. But I, I went into a video shop and um, there was a girl that was standing behind the counter and she was quite, quite rude to me. At, like, you know, looked at me up and down like, who are you? What are you doing here? Like, you know, and it's just like, fuck, I just came into the video shop. Like, just let me get a video. This, <laughs> this is back in the day when we get like VHS tapes, you know, before DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff. And I just go pick out my video and bring it up to the counter. And yeah. Uh, and... As I walked past her, energetically, a woman came around me straight away. I distinctively remember this. It was a woman. She had curly blonde hair, pulled up in a ponytail, red glass. Like I remember she was one of the first really strong like downloads that came through and connected with me. And there was no one else in the video shop. It was empty. So I picked up the video and as I'm picking up the video off the shelf that I'm choosing, some information started coming through. By the way, with mediumship, spirit generally is so excited and ecstatic that you're able to deliver the information to them that they come through and they talk really fast, they talk really hard and a lot of what they say is very direct, it's very brutal. So it's like, that's one thing that the real mediums, like real mediums know that. They've got to actually decipher and soften down the message to give to the other person if because if I just came up and just went the like you know and just said it but it's gonna it could cause a lot of damage particularly if that other person isn't in a state that they agreed to a reading first so when we assert ourselves on people and just give them a reading without their permission that is really unfair you don't know where their mind is you know are they able to handle that Probably not, but you're doing it. They didn't ask for it. Don't do it. I've learned the hard way. I'll give you another example after this as well. So as I came back up to the to the counter to give her the video, I remember I just basically just channeled word for word what this woman on the other side was telling me. And this girl standing behind the counter, scanning the video, looked up at me and I could just see within seconds, her eyes filled up with water and she was just bursting into tears. And I said, I think it's your mother. Uh, she's telling me that you have left this thing on the bedside. Um, also, if you go down to the back of the house on the left, there's a loose brick. If you pull the brick out, there'll be something there for you. And yesterday the cat jumped up on you and it was her, like it was stuff like that, like really hardcore stuff that she couldn't, she knew that I could not possibly know. And so when you, I went, I went straight for the jugular, but I did it in a way that was so rude. I wasn't doing it from a place of love. I was doing it because I just wanted to fuck her up spiritually and she didn't need that. She didn't, des- yeah, she was rude to me when I walked in, but she didn't need that. But I didn't know that at the time. So I just went there. I just said it. And she dropped, she dropped to the floor. She nearly dropped, she nearly fainted. And then I realized what I'd done. And I went, oh shit, that was really wrong of me. And I shut, 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 stop, stop, stop. And I just channeled, I tried to shut it down. But back then I didn't have the tools to know how to close that down. And that's another problem that you can do. You'll have the spirit, the entity will follow you because it's you've, you've opened a portal, you've opened the connection, it thinks you can fulfill its need. Now you've got all these spirits in your house. Now you've got all these things around you. And sometimes saying, oh, just go away, I'm done now. Like I'll be in the shower and it's like, it doesn't work like that. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. Sage won't work, Polo Santo won't work. You've opened up something inside your energetic field, in your auric field. You've aligned that and you've invited it. When you invite something that's different to it, enforcing it into your space, 
you've invited it, yeah? Another part of the medium world that no one wants to ever talk about, may as well say it here. Yeah, it can happen. I'll give you some story examples later in this video. So yeah, there I am. I've just given a psychic attack reading and I had no right to do that. It was very rude and cruel of me to do that to her. And I learned from that age, don't do it, don't do it. And sometimes you get messages and you just can't help it. You know, if you've watched the Long Island Medium or you've watched, um, you know, Tyler Henry, I think it's more like the Long Island Medium. You know, she'll go up to someone in, at the fruit shop and say, hey, I'm a medium, I've got it. But she always, she's asking them. And I think that makes good TV. But at the end of the day, it, was, it will always be best when it's done in a setting that is conduitive to really bringing out the best in that reading, not just doing it on the spot to someone just because you feel like it. They didn't agree to that, okay? Just like sometimes we don't agree to it. Like sometimes spirit comes through to me and I don't want to go there because right now I'm, I'm driving my car. Right now I'm doing my art. Right now I'm doing something. So I can't, we've got to have boundary. But that's another thing that, you know, really understanding boundary is so important when it comes to this stuff because it, it is so, so personal. Oh, wow. Okay. I just looked at the time. It is one hour. Oh, wow. Okay. We might make this a part two. I'll come back and I'll do a part two. I hope that you're enjoying this video. I'm going to come back with some more story time and we'll talk about uh, psychic mediumship, where it all goes wrong and why I quit. All right. Uh, I'll see you in part two. All right.